As the coronavirus has spread around the world and self-interested Karens across America have bought all the toilet paper that exists in the entire universe, major gatherings of people have been canceled in order to limit the spread of the pandemic. While this has resulted in the closing of sports stadiums and museums, it has also resulted in the cancellation of the biggest gathering in the video game world. So E3 is canceled, now what? While E3 may be canceled, there is no doubt that many digital equivalents will fill the void, and with them, a similar amount of hype and potentially empty promises. Did I just see new Assassin's Creed gameplay for the first time? Yeah, absolutely. That was uh, directly from the game uh, in all its Viking Age glory. While this has often been the case, this year in particular is especially prone to extreme hype because this year represents the birth of the next generation of consoles, the PlayStation 5 and the Xbox Series X. Considering that the previous console generation represented a mixed bag for the industry as a whole, we are reasonably concerned that this next console generation will be similarly one step forward, one step back in nature. In an attempt to avoid this, and to counteract any unsubstantiated hype created by whatever fills the void left by E3, here are five things we don't want to see in this next console generation. If there is one certainty in the history of video games, it is that as time progresses, so too does the graphical fidelity of the games that are released. Franchises that have existed over multiple console generations, like Forza Motorsport, demonstrate just how far graphics have come in just the last decade, while older franchises like Zelda show the unbelievable progress made over the entirety of the medium's existence. With this in mind, it is almost a given that the next generation of consoles will bring yet another leap forward in video game visuals, complete with new lighting effects, better textures, and, God willing, a final end to the greatest graphical problem of all, modeled in-game objects clipping through each other. However, while improved visual quality can be virtually guaranteed for the launch titles on both the PS5 and Series X, what is not so certain for these games is their overall quality, especially if the prior generation is any indication. Before its release, The Order 1886 was one of the most anticipated games in the world, in no small part due to its simply breathtaking visuals. The amazing lighting and facial animation, combined with the prospect of using electric steampunk rifles to hunt down werewolves, was thrilling. That is, until the game actually came out, and players discovered, to their disappointment, that the game was actually a linear, by-the-numbers, third-person cover shooter. Though not the only title to prove this point, The Order 1886 is the perfect demonstration of how graphical fidelity alone cannot overcome glaring problems in a video game. It also demonstrates something we don't want to see in the next console generation, a game that has amazing graphics and not much else. But look at those chairs. Aren't those chairs pretty? While we know that publishers are going to push for superior graphics on next gen, we don't want that to be at the expense of the game itself. Instead, considering that graphics are going to improve anyway as a result of increased processing power, we want developers to prioritize world building, storytelling, and gameplay over the visuals. Graphical powerhouses like The Order 1886 and its X-Bone equivalent, Rise, Son of Rome, might seem like safe financial bets, but their success is fleeting compared to games that prioritize overall quality. With this in mind, if games are going to look beautiful anyway, let's make sure that they're beautiful to play as well. <laughs> Besides visual improvements, a new console generation also means new intellectual property. Just as the transition from PlayStation 2 to PlayStation 3 and Xbox to Xbox 360 brought better lighting and textures, it also brought new franchises like Uncharted and Gears of War. And with that in mind, hopes are high that the Xbox Series X and PlayStation 5 will give birth to new worlds and ideas to explore. However, just as gaming history gives us hope for the interesting new worlds we may explore, this history also gives us anxiety for what may come, especially considering that the execution of these initially tantalizing ideas often leaves a lot to be desired. After the Xbox One and PlayStation 4 launched, both consoles featured massively hyped AAA titles like Destiny, Watch Dogs, and Titanfall, each of which were new intellectual property that ultimately left players disappointed for a variety of frustrating reasons. 
Several years later, and each of these games have arguably redressed their respective issues, not through patches or content updates, but through sequels that fix the flaws that never should have existed in the first place. Considering the overwhelming and aggressive advertising campaigns behind each of these games, the publishers clearly hope to manufacture hype in order to generate sales and overcome any negativity from either the press or the public. However, we cannot help but feel that this hype was more than just a publisher trying to sell a game they knew to be flawed. Now, we may come off as a bit cynical for saying this, but to us, these games were not so much complete first entries in a series as they were $60 beta tests for new intellectual property, and as such, an opportunity for publishers to guarantee profits by selling the broken version first and the fixed version years later. As the expression goes, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. If fool me, we can't get fooled again. <laughs> Simply put, we refuse to be fooled again, and will not be participating in this kind of nonsense on next-gen consoles. Considering the seventh-gen success of franchises like Zelda and The Witcher, both of which went through years of development and release delays in order to ensure a quality product, we are hopeful that the industry as a whole has figured out that this is the way to go, and overhyped, rushed-out cash grabs become the exception as opposed to the rule. We don't want $60 beta tests with multi-gig day one patches, but if that ends up being the case, we're just going to stick with current gen until things change for the better. Besides, an afternoon with Breath of the Wild is just a button press away. While the seventh generation came to a close in 2013, it did not go quietly into the night. In fact, the year represented a last triumph for both the Xbox 360 and PlayStation 3 with the release of major single-player titles like Tomb Raider, Assassin's Creed Black Flag, and Grand Theft Auto V, which, over half a decade since its release, remains one of the most highly rated and best-selling games in history. Besides the major financial impact on the industry, the generation's last great triumph also included some of the best story modes in the history of gaming. The Last of Us represented a peak both for Naughty Dog and the entire industry in the field of emotional storytelling, while Bioshock Infinite used its spectacular and nuanced story to philosophize about difficult questions regarding the interactions between science and human nature. The Lord forgives everything, but I'm just a prophet, so I don't have to. Unfortunately, this emphasis on story-focused single-player experiences was fleeting. In 2014, Titanfall was released as a multiplayer-only game sold at full price, and though it initially received a fair amount of criticism for this, it would ultimately represent the birth of a trend in the industry. A year later, both Evolve and the reboot for Star Wars Battlefront were released as multiplayer-only games at full price. A year after that, the similarly full price, multiplayer-only Overwatch was not only released to overwhelming critical acclaim, but was ultimately declared Game of the Year by the Game Awards. Then, in 2018, Call of Duty would abandon its single-player campaign mode entirely. And today, multiplayer games like PlayerUnknown's Battlegrounds and Fortnite continue to dominate the entire industry. Though single-player-focused games still exist and still receive a fair amount of attention, multiplayer games maintain such a vice-like grip on the entire industry that even franchises with a story-based single-player history either only possess a vestigial story mode or have abandoned single-player entirely. With this in mind, we are concerned that this trend will continue on in the next console generation, and we don't want a multiplayer monopoly on next-gen games. Instead, we want to see a return to story-focused single-player games like The Last of Us and Bioshock that continue to push the medium's artistic potential forward. Not only would redressing this balance result in a more diverse gaming landscape, but it would also mean that players currently left out of gaming's mainstream would come back into the fold. And, as a result, both publishers and developers would have a larger consumer base, allowing them to make more money. The immense success of 8th generation single-player games like The Witcher 3, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, and The Outer Worlds prove that there is a massive audience for these games and a huge potential for the industry to grow. And with the overwhelming hype surrounding Cyberpunk 2077, we at Dankswank are confident that these titles represent a new era of single-player stories in gaming. Hopefully with plenty of renegade options available. <clears throat> Admiral, you jeopardized your mission and your people. Get the hell off my ship.
Just like in the prior console generation, first-person shooters have dominated the landscape of the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One. From Metro Exodus to 2016's Doom, the FPS games of the 8th console generation represent a massive array of different experiences. However, while some shooters of this generation represent variety, many others represent a major problem in the industry as a whole, that problem being the sea of derivative AAA games. Just like with the disproportionate attention given to multiplayer this console generation, Titanfall is similarly emblematic of this redundancy problem. At the time of the initial gameplay trailers in 2013, the wall running and boost jumping available in Titanfall was seen as both unique and a major leap forward for first-person shooters. While this was initially true, these sentiments would end up aging like milk, as nearly every major player in the genre, from Destiny to Call of Duty to Apex Legends, would put out games that featured similar mechanics coupled with a similarly futuristic backdrop. If we once again look at Overwatch, it also had its own cavalcade of derivatives. Its arguably unique identity as a hero shooter was lost even before it was launched, as Gearbox released its own hero shooter, Battleborn, just three weeks earlier. A few years after that, we have Paladins, Quake Champions, Bleeding Edge, and many other hero variants oversaturating the market. And all that is before we even begin to talk about the derivative and creatively bankrupt Last Man Standing gets to floss on all the corpses on the shrinking map genre, aka Battle Royale games. While we understand that this phenomenon means players can choose among a variety of different titles to find the specific variation of the game they prefer, it also means that publishers wanting to play it safe often push for the development of derivatives as opposed to new and creative ideas. As a result, games start to become interchangeable with one another, and video games as an art form start to stagnate. Considering this, and our personal contempt for that game Ninja likes to scream at on Mixer, THE FUCK DO YOU SAY TO ME, YOU LITTLE SHIT?! We want to see the next console generation put an end to this attack of the clones. Instead, let's see companies use this new generation to experiment with new ideas. In much the same way as games like The Outer Worlds and The Witcher 3 have proven that single player has a future on the PS5 and Series X, games like Ancestors and Death Stranding show that unique approaches to gameplay and plot lines, though facing a mixed reception at the moment, have potential. And with truly viable VR on the horizon, this next console generation is just the place for these sorts of games to come into their own. Besides, if it doesn't work out, we can always return to dabbing over the bodies of default skins. All right. We've managed to avoid this gripe until now. But just as this issue is now inescapable in the industry, so too is it inescapable in a discussion of things to avoid in the next console generation. Most of you watching this video knew it had to be coming at some point, and we can't avoid talking about it anymore. It's the epidemic of microtransactions, loot boxes, and battle passes that dominates the entire gaming industry. What initially began as a distracting but benign inclusion in full-priced games has expanded to become a malignant and inescapable cancer of greed and exploitation, whether in the form of overlong progression systems that essentially force players to shell out real-world money in order to progress at a reasonable rate, or games that completely lock off important content from players until they provide their credit card details, the concept of putting more money into a full-priced game you already paid for in order to get the full experience has become the rule as opposed to the exception. We're still with news that the PlayStation 5 might have a microtransaction-based search engine for tips to progress in a game, it looks like these extortionate practices might expand even further than they are today. While it may seem futile to say we don't want these exploitative practices to continue into the next console generation, there is hope. In fact, our distaste for post-purchase monetization in games is shared with a huge portion of the industry's audience. The overwhelming negativity these practices have received, both from professional critics and numerous players, is slowly pushing publishers to move away from these sorts of practices. And considering the potential legal repercussions publishers may face for continuing to implement things like loot boxes, microtransactions may even disappear within the next console generation. 
this may seem a bit optimistic, but Sony has already faced some major backlash for console-based microtransactions before the PlayStation 5 has even been revealed to the public. Considering that similar backlash transformed the Xbox One from an artificially restricted Orwellian surveillance camera into a truly fantastic console, complete with multi-generational backwards compatibility and crossplay, we have good reason to be hopeful. And despite our concerns, we remain excited to see what will come with the next generation of consoles. There you go. Those are the five things we do not want to see in this upcoming console generation. Do you have any things that you don't want to see on either the Xbox Series X or PlayStation 5? Maybe you have some things you're excited or hopeful will come with this next console generation. Either way, feel free to let us know in the comments, make sure to check out our Patreon, and make sure to like and subscribe to see more content like this from Dankswank, the classiest cavern on the World Wide Web.